Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I have a new video tutorial created for 7 Dot Studio. I created an altered mixed media canvas that really reminds me of a firefly. And I just really love all the little details and textures that I added to make this look very bright and colorful. All the products and links are listed below in the description area, so just sit down, relax, and enjoy the process. I took a 6x6 gallery canvas which has a really thick border and it has a few metal buttons on the side but it could be any type of canvas and I covered it in black gesso. I covered it all around the edges and just a little bit in the center because I knew I was going to put some paper in the center. I also took a mason jar lid and just took the lid itself without the center because I wanted to create some kind of a shaker element to my canvas. Once the black gesso was dry, I took a 6x6 paper from the 7 Dot Studio Hazy Days collection and using some soft matte gel medium from Prima, I glued it to the background. Then I took some of the gel and sealed it also so it would withstand all the mixed media I was going to put on it. The gel helps protect the paper and lets you prep the page for more things, more mediums that can go on the background. To create some texture in the background, I took the triangle stencil from the Dreamscape collection from 7 Dot Studio and using some graphite texture paste from Prima Finabare, I did the texture only on the edges and created a border around the canvas. This stencil comes with an open-ended area that you can really put right against the border of the canvas and create a great texture that way. I also took the actual paste and created texture on the edges of my canvas by applying it with a palette knife or the silicone brush and I did it in a roughly manner so it would create this really rough texture. While the paste was drying, I took the mason jar lid and I painted it with the Prima Finabare Pure Sunshine Acrylic Paint. This is a yellow metallic paint and I just went around and gave the lid a couple of coats. You will see later, however, that I actually turned this more of a golden color, but the yellow did help give that really nice sunshine look to the background. trace the lid onto an acetate sheet so I could put it inside the lid and seal the hole so I could create my shaker part of the canvas. I just cut it out with scissors and try to fit it in the middle and then glue it. This is not a heat resist acetate sheet so do not heat set it. This is just part of a packaging that I'm reusing. You could use heat resist acetate which I've used in other videos and that will help it dry faster because you could use your heat tool. However, I took, I just waited it out and just let it dry on its own and I used some soft matte gel to just glue it inside the lid. It did take a little bit longer to dry than I wanted to but I did other things in the meantime. While the lid was drying, I took the yellow acrylic paint again and using a brush, I use a dry brush technique to apply it to the textured area both in the front and on the sides of the canvas. The dry brush technique is a good way to add a little bit of color to an area without taking away the background texture. So it just gives a small tinge of color and you can keep the really nice dark texture in the background. I 
I use the Prima Finever Art Alchemy Wax in the aged brass color to add a little bit more golden highlights to the canvas. I did this using my fingers and just added it in certain areas to just mix both the yellow and the gold together to get a really nice bright effect. I took another piece of acetate which was going to seal the other side of the lid and glued a beautiful Amwow Studios designed for 7 Dot Studios flare. Then I added a lot of beads, both regular beads, micro beads and some sequin to the inside of the lid so I could create a shaker card. I let the flare dry for a little while before I was turning it around to put the actual lid. I took several papers from the 6x6 paper pad from both the Hazy Days and the Dreamscapes collection from 7 Dot Studio and I cut out a few flourishes using the Tim Holtz Elegant Flourish die. Then I took some Distress Ink, both Wild Honey and Rusty Hinge and added with my dauber some ink on some areas of the flourishes so it would turn them a little bit more orange. Then I arranged my flourishes around the canvas towards the outside and let some of the flourishes hang out off the canvas. I guess I should have thought of it sooner and should have cut some chipboard pieces with the flourishes so I could back up the paper so it wouldn't be as flimsy but I did find a solution for that later on and I'll show you what I did. So here I'm just arranging all the flourishes and then I took some soft matte gel and used it to glue all these flourishes to the background. I glued all the flourishes using the gel and then what I did is for those pieces that were sticking out from the outside I added some gel both at the top and at the bottom of the flourish so it would strengthen that paper and wouldn't buckle and that helped keep it in place and if you really want to make it strong you could either add a lot of different layers of the gel or you could cut out something a little bit sturdier to back it up underneath which is I guess what I should have done but it's okay I don't go back on my mistakes I just move forward and continue on so here I am gluing everything and rearranging it the way I like it and then after that I sealed everything both top and bottom with the gel I cut out a circle out of the Hazy Days paper. This is a 6x6 paper from the same paper pad. So I could place it in the center and that would be the base for my lid. Then I took some of the soft matte gel and added it to the rim of the lid, turned my acetate upside down and let it dry underneath. You have to make sure that this is really, really dry because as you can see here, I didn't let it dry fully even though I thought I did and some of it spilled. I did fix this other afterwards but it did spill when I lifted it up a little bit. 
To create the wings, I took another Tim Holtz big die. This is from the B, and I cut out just the wings out of it. I was going to put the whole thing, but it didn't really fit properly. I wish I would have had the actual dragonfly or the uh, butterfly, but I didn't have it, so I just had to make do with what I had. And I used the B, and I actually really love how the wings turned out. I the B set comes with both the die die and the actual embossing folder to create those ridges on the wings so that's what I did I put it through the embossing folder and all I kept were the wings and added them around my lid once the lid was glued to the background which I had to let dry for a while I took some of the art alchemy wax again and just added a little bit on top to make sure that it doesn't look as yellow and it matches the rest of the canvas then I took some soft matte gel medium and dipping it into the pot and then dipping it inside some microbeads. These are the copper microbeads. I added some more texture around the wings and around the lid and even some of it on top of the lid itself as well. I also added some regular beads which are a little bit bigger than those micro beads and just to add different texture around the lid. I let this dry thoroughly because I had to make sure that the acetate doesn't melt so I couldn't heat set it. So I literally walked away and just let this dry naturally for many hours because gel sometimes takes a long time to dry. And then I came back to it and, and added what I, my final touches. I took some of the wax and just added some uh, nice cute light bulb from Prima Marketing and added a few more touches with some gems and glued everything to the background. These Say It in Crystals gems from Prima Marketing were the perfect color as an accent to my canvas. Sometimes I don't know in which direction the project is going to take me. I knew I wanted to create a kind of shaker element to my canvas and I knew that I wanted a firefly but I didn't know what else and how I was going to execute it and I'm actually quite happy with the result and I hope you enjoyed this video. Here I am showing you how it shakes and just moving the little beads and sequin inside the little lid. I just think it's nice to use something that you can recycle like a mason jar lid and just go ahead and find other things in your house that you can use for those purposes. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it on your, with your friends in social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. Bye!